Hey guys, it's your old pal Andy back here with another vlog. Um, old guy talking photography. Still don't know what I'm going to call this thing officially, but let's run with that for right now. Just want to run down a few things that have been going on lately. It's been kind of cool. Last weekend in New Philadelphia, the Tuscarawas Arts Partnership, TAP, opened the brand new Artigan Alley in downtown New Philadelphia. It's a repurposing of a space that has been there for many years. I've shot pictures in the alley. Uh, it runs between the Main Street, West High, back to the Alley Cats Marketplace, which is a art shop, uh, I don't know what's the best way to put it, where you can go and buy from local artisans. I've been kicking around the idea for a long time about myself getting in there, just haven't gotten around to it yet. But it's a great little shop. You should, if you're in the area of New Philadelphia, I definitely recommend checking it out. And they had the idea, hey, we're going to take the space, we're going to repurpose it, and we're going to allow artisans to showcase their work. So they went through the list of artists in the area that they knew, and, well, they picked me for one of them. And I was extremely thrilled to be a part of it. Uh, so we got the image that we decided on that we were going to use. Here it is. It's an image I took in the Tuscarawas River back in September of 2020, uh, early September, when the sun came up before 7 o'clock. And before I started my day job, I could run down there and take pictures. I always enjoy taking pictures of the sunrise. Whether or not I get anything that I use, it doesn't matter. It's just more about the getting out there, enjoying the moment, relaxing before starting a day of work. And... I decided while I was sitting there, there was there's stones in the river, river stones, uh, mainly sandstone. I thought, you know, I'm gonna make a cairn. So I start stacking some rocks up, and really liked how it looked. So I took a couple pictures of it, and well, that's the image they wanted to use. So this past Saturday, they opened Artigan Alley, and there's oh, 12 maybe artists along with myself there. So definitely check it out. Support local art, wherever you are, whatever community you're in. If there's a local art community, definitely go out and support your local artisans. Because a lot of us have day jobs. Uh, we can't make a living, unfortunately, off of our art. Uh, so we have to go to work, You know, have a job that provides. Fortunately, I have. I work in IT. I'm a computer nerd, obviously. And it's, it's a good thing to do. Then on Sunday, Sunday was another exciting art on the alley, which I've been, I think, for three years now. I didn't do the first one. I wanted to check it out before I committed to doing something like that. And after Denise and I went to it, she's like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. Denise, my wife, by the way. Uh, she's like, you got to do this. You got to you gotta get in there. You got you to gotta do this. So I applied and I was accepted. And it has been great ever since. It's a great way to showcase your work for people who don't necessarily follow you on Facebook, follow your other social media outlets, just to say, hey, I know this place. I've never seen it like that before. Wow, that's cool. And then, of course, hopefully buy a copy of it so they can take home and put it on their wall. Um, yeah, I said this years ago with my photography. I, I I'm not going to make a million dollars from this. I know I'm never going to make a million dollars from this, and I'm fine with that. Well, it'd be cool, but I'm fine with it. My point is, if 100 years from now, 50 years from now, 10 years from now, a piece of my work is on somebody's wall, and it's something that they look at every day, their family looks at every day, uh, pass down their generations look at it, that's all I want. I personally don't want to be remembered as an IT professional. I want to be remembered as a photographer. And, you know, it's a process. I feel like I'm getting there. The reason why I feel like I'm getting there is the impression I've had on my grandson. My grandson, both my grandkids, uh, my grandson's five, my granddaughter's three months. Uh, but my grandson grew up with me. Uh, here. They lived with us while he was growing up. And he's my buddy. He's my pal. We just have a great time together. Always joking around, always playing. Well, for this version of Art on the Alley on Sunday, they had trick-or-treating 
all the vendors will bring, most all the vendors will bring, you know, bag, a couple bags of candy, hand out to the kids. Kids dress up in costumes. They go around trick-or-treating. So we were waiting for them to show up because the, the kids will come down to see, you know, uh, Gideon's parents, my son and his wife, my daughter-in-law, my daughter. Um, they'll come down and, you know, just hang out. We'll play with the kids. But... Gideon was going to wear a costume and go trick-or-treating. He was looking forward to it. So I'm sitting there, we're waiting on him, and then I hear my wife say, oh, here they come. And I see them walking up. My grandson is wearing a baseball cap. He's got glasses on. He has a camera around his neck. He wanted to be me for Halloween to go trick-or-treating. His grandpa. He also went as far as to put a pillow under his coat to help get their papa belly. And he asked his mom to get uh, some gray felt to make the beard, but she didn't since he was wearing a face mask, so that was his beard. And he went around telling everybody that he's a photographer, and huzzah, you have to say huzzah because we say huzzah a lot in playing, and that... He's from Michigan, and he's from here in Michigan, because that's how any native Michigander, Michiganian, me, usually tell people, oh, I grew up here, we had a cabin up here, we visit friends here, we're going to Trevor City here. You use your hand, and it's a Michigan thing. So he was going around making sure he was telling everybody he was trick-or-treating, that he, he's a photographer, he's his grandpa. And, you know, of all the choices for a five-year-old, to dress up for Halloween, Captain America, Spider-Man, a Pokemon, whatever. He chose me. That was pretty cool. So Art on the Alley went well. The weather could have been better. It was sunny for a while, then it clouded, then it rained a little. But we, you know, we still had a lot of traffic through. And, you know, I, I guess the biggest thing, like I said before, for me is to actually get to talk to people. I actually got to speak with a woman who came by the booth and... She noticed the pictures of the Howden Joy Buffalo plant that I shot back in June. And she went on to tell me that her father worked there. Um, unfortunately, her father had a heart attack there and passed away. And she was moved by the pictures and she bought a couple of them uh, because that is a place that meant something to them, to her family, and of course her father ultimately passing there and it just made me feel good that again what I'm looking for in life is not the recognition not the millions of dollars would be nice but that somebody is saw my image an image of mine and it moved them and it touched them and it gave them something to remember and hold on to of their departed father so that was pretty cool but one of the other things I love doing is talking about my work, the process, how I go about doing it, how I, the star shots. I always talk about the star shots. That, that, that's what draws people in is the star trail images that I do. They see it and they go, oh, how, what is this? How did you do that? Did you, you know, did you do something special? And you tell them that, no, that's how the stars move through the sky at night. And it's a series of 30 second exposures over an hour and a half, two hours. And then you blend them all together and then you export it over to Lightroom, and then you edit it up, finish the editing, and boom, you get your final shot. And that just blows them away. But it, you know, it draws them in. Well, I was sitting there, we, it was slowed down a little bit, and there was a younger girl, teenage girl, that came by, and you know, said hello, like I do to everybody, and uh, she had a camera around her neck and a camera bag. I said, oh, what you shooting? She told me she's shooting a Canon. She's just starting out. I said, wow, that's great, you know, and we were talking some more, and I said, well, let me give you a little bit of advice. So that's what this episode really is all about. You know, we, it's so easy to go out, I don't have my phone with me, there we are, it's, it's easy to go out and use this, your iPhone, to take pictures, because your iPhone's great at taking pictures, the newer ones. I've got a 12. I would really like to get a 13. I've heard great things about them, but for the most part, they shoot great. You can shoot raw on these. You can edit really well on these. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Um, but she has a camera. She's got a starter kit. And I, I, I told her the, the two pieces of, of advice that I think really 
are most valuable for starting out like this is one shoot raw always shoot in raw format regardless if it's your iPhone if it's your camera whatever shoot in raw format raw format allows you that flexibility and that ability to really bring out the colors to really fix highlights to fix shadows to tone things up to tone things down without blowing away the image completely uh, applications like Lightroom are great because they will read that raw file they'll open it up and then you make the changes to the file and then you save it out but those changes are saved to a library that are non-destructive to the original image so definitely shoot raw and the second thing really the I think one of the most important things that anybody should know when they're starting out is the kit lenses are good ain't gonna, yeah, ain't gonna say you know be a snob oh it's a kit lens no if you've got and I'm thinking of what Jared Polin always says the composition the exposure the focus it doesn't matter what lens you have you're gonna get the image but of course better glass gives you better results I'm still trying to figure out which lens I'm gonna shoot my vlogs on right now I'm using my Tamron uh, 24 to 70 I also have a Tamron 70 to 200 and these are professional grade lenses I finally made the decision after time to slowly start buying better lenses because lenses can be quite an investment along with camera bodies but lenses are your second biggest investment I shoot Canon and to buy the Canon lenses well, those are usually over a thousand dollars a lens but then when you look at the other vendors like Sigma Tamron they make really good glass and it's more affordable so if you don't have a lot of money like me I mean anything I make in my photography I turn around and put back into the business so I'm not going further into debt or you know taking away from something else it's strictly if I made money with the photography I'm gonna buy equipment the Canon R that I'm shooting on right now I saved up money to buy that this lens that lens a couple other lenses in my case over here invest in the glass the glass is what is most important to capture those images those colors those sharpness so if you get good glass you're gonna get an even better image regardless of what body you're using so those are my two important things I think to pass on so while I'm waiting for this to back up my computer hasn't been backing up properly to the cloud for the past couple of days uh, I just wanted to share those thoughts it's about five o'clock right now I'm probably going to run out and see if I can capture some fall. We're finally getting fall here in Ohio. It's been cold and chilly, but it's a beautiful, at least now, blue sky. It's supposed to cloud up and rain tomorrow. It's supposed to be a full moon tonight. If I'm up, I may pull the big lens out. Yeah, I've got a big Canon 150-600 to that I, or I'm sorry, not a Canon, a Sigma 150-600 to Canon mount that I love using to take pictures of the moon. And so, who knows? We'll see. But anyways... Just wanted to share what's up. Just wanted to share my thoughts. Uh, if you are watching this and you were at Art in the Alley, thank you for coming out. If you didn't buy anything, that's you know no big deal. Thank you for supporting other artists. Thank you for looking around. Thank you for allowing us artisans to actually see people stopping and looking at their work. It's for me it brings me a lot of joy. Just to be for somebody to come up and take a look at the picture and go, wow, that's really cool or how did you do this like with the stars or to give somebody just starting out you know a little bit of advice it's great it, it, it's the best feeling in the world so if you were one of those people thank you if you're one of those people that bought something thank you very much i already have another lens in mind that i'm saving for so you've helped contribute to a local artisan but definitely get out there check out the festivals and if you're new to photography definitely play definitely learn you know I've got how many thousands and thousands of images stored on my hard drives back here. Uh, but that's okay, because a lot of them are learning. A lot of them are testing. Not every picture you take is going to be, wow, that picture. But the more you practice, the more you learn, the more you apply what you've practiced and learned towards your work, the more of those images that are like, wow, this is a really good picture, you're going to get. So just do it. 
So that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. I don't know when I'll be doing the next one. I don't even know what I'll be talking about, but we'll have another one soon, I'm sure. Take care. Bye.